gospel with others to bring healing and peace to people. From all my years of experience, what I saw is when the gospel is preached, when the gospel obeys the word of God or the gospel, they get their freedom. They get peace in their home. Peace, really, among people around them, with their neighbor, at last, with all people that they live with. The gospel does a lot of things in our life. The first and most important thing I would like to say this morning about handing on the faith is this. Everything begins and ends with Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. He is not only the beginning and the end, but he is also the way through. We shall ask, we shall ask what caused the early church to spread the gospel like wildfire. In the opening of, uh, in the opening pages of the book of Acts chapter 2, it shows us the church God launched has become the foundation of Christianity. On the birthday of the Lord's Church, there were 3,000 people. It's hard to believe, but it is true. We have to accept it. 3,000 people obeyed the gospel in one day. Acts 2, verse 41. This was quite an amazing day as it marked the beginning of the church that Jesus established or founded. Matthew 16, 18, and in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. At their second public gathering, over 5,000 were added to their number. That's right. Well, if we read it in the Bible, that's true. That's true. And you know, that can happen even today. We may, we may, we may think, oh, no, 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 no. But it happens in several places. You remember the pictures that you saw under the tree? We had 2,500 people there, Amen. under one tree. Amen. That tree was the first preacher training school in <laughs> Ethiopia. Amen. God is working all the time. Historians and scholars go on to tell us that within six months of Pentecost, there were many thousand new Christians in the city of Jerusalem. And here is the reality. Every single one of us trace our face back to this moment that began with a handful of Christians in Acts chapter 2. That's our history. That's the Lord's church history. When we realize the magnitude of what happened through this group of people, it raises a question. What was it about them that enabled them to be so mightily used of God? The Bible tells us that the apostles were a desperate group of nobodies. Nobody knew their names. Nobody knew their platform. Nobody knew where they had come from. Yet, history records that they were used by God to literally turn the world 
upside down. Amen. It is not Baha'i Lu, it's not you, but it is the Holy Spirit that works yeah. in us. That's why the Holy Spirit is given to us as a gift when we put on Christ in baptism. I think if we look closely at Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 14, we can find four characteristics of the early church that we can apply to our own lives. They had a faith that produced obedience. They had, they trusted God and they did what God commanded them. That's what it takes. If, we, if every one of us try what we can do in the kingdom, then God will finish it. Yeah, God will finish it. Uh, brothers and sisters, I have learned one thing in my 57 years. <laughs> <laughs> 54 was with working with brother John L. Clark. In my 57 years of service in the kingdom, that is one, the single greatest thing I carry to the field is not just my training. I'm glad and I'm grateful yeah. to all the missionaries who came to Ethiopia who taught me and trained me. I really appreciate it. But the training is good, but I need to have Christ with me when I go out and preach. It's not just my education, it's not just my experience, it's not even just my passion. But the single greatest thing I carry with me is my intimate love relationship with Jesus. Everything Jesus desired, desires, everything Jesus desires to do through us, he will do out of the overflow of what he is doing in us. The apostle and the first century Christians had a passion that produced unity. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14 it tells us they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Here the scripture is confirming us that they were in one mind, one heart, one passion, and one determination. If the writer is telling us that these people are all wrapped their hearts around the same thing. The Bible says every time Jesus got around his disciples, he talked about one subject and that was about the kingdom of God, the church, the body of Christ. What is the kingdom of God? What is the church? That is the church he bought by his own blood. Amen. Acts 20, 28. The kingdom of God is the ultimate, eternal, redemptive mission of God. The kingdom of God is the big picture of what God is doing in the world. It is a king. It is a kingdom that it is a kingdom that will be ruled by God's appointment, appointed Messiah, who will be not just the redeemer of his people, but their king. Amen. The kingdom of God is the body of Christ, the church, where Jesus is taught to people about the king about the Messiah, to disciple them in kingdom living 
and send them out for the expansion of the kingdom to the ends of the world. Church, when we read the book of Acts, we see the church as an unstoppable or overwhelming force. Let's not underestimate the power of God. God is able to do anything he wants and he can do it. I think I've shared with you in my life I've been persecuted, I've been imprisoned, I've, so many things has happened. All those pictures and everything, all the reports is beautiful, but there is also another side of the picture. So many. A young girl who was a member of the church, who has grown in the church during the time of the communist, she was carrying a Bible to go to church. She was arrested for two months and nobody could even go there and visit her. There are many, many stories that I cannot really tell you in the time that I have here. But the thing is, you know, God is always the winner. That's right. Everything changed. There was a question this morning. How is, is, it, is there a freedom to go and preach and plant churches in Ethiopia today? In the 90s, no. Now, yes. Who changed it? It's God. Praise be to God. Uh, God's kingdom is still powerful and spreading like wildfire in some parts of the world. Let's not forget God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that's what the Bible tells us. God is continuing doing the same thing in my country and other places of Africa. God has given us a faith that produce obedience. Over 75 souls were baptized and added upon the church in less than four months. And this is just that I have seen. But when you talk about 1,500 churches in Ethiopia, I don't know how many. The church, the word is preached. When the word is preached, there are people, hungry people to hear his yeah. word. That makes a difference. Over 120 preachers are trained annually in Ethiopia. As I said this morning, it looks like there's too many preachers. That's not too many preachers when you deal with 120 million people. Well, it's really great to have 1,500 churches. But we need more churches. Amen. We are just dealing with 2.7 million people that is given the opportunity to hear the gospel. How many churches can we plant among just the 2.7 people, million people? Money. So that's why we continue to train more Ethiopians, more young men, more people of God to take the gospel and to go to these areas and preach and plant the church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, <coughs> unhumbled by your monthly supports and prayers offered, 
We need your prayers before the support. Because prayer is powerful. You know what the Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians? Pray without ceasing. Every two years, we have what we call a National Preachers Conference in Ethiopia. Thousands come together. We stay in one week together, pray together, plan together, discuss together, hear questions from the various evangelists. Some evangelists are not as bright as others. So that gives us the, the opportunity to come together and to discuss. And what question were you asked and you could not be able to answer? Just simple. Let's not complicate it. So one time, a person raised his hand, an evangelist raised his hand. He said, there is one question that many people ask me and I cannot answer it. And we said, what is that? He said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. Yeah. He said, rejoice always. That's right. Pray without ceasing. That's right. And it tells us that's the will of God through Jesus Christ to us. And he said, I can't, I don't understand. How am I going to pray without ceasing? Yeah. Early in the morning until evening, when I have to go and farm, I have to work. So someone have a, who came and asked me, I don't understand that scripture. I've had a big problem. Can you help me? Can you explain it? Well, there is a brother that we have, an evangelist, that I really believe the best evangelist, preacher, teacher in Ethiopia is Brother Mogas. So, as we look at each other, everyone said, Brother Mogas, let him think about it, prepare a lesson, and tomorrow morning let him discuss. <laughs> let him tell us. So we gave him the opportunity, and he went home that night. And I want you to hear what has happened. He went home, and he, he opened his Bible and started studying. The more he reads that scripture, the more he is confused. And he was just studying, trying to study. He likes to read uh, Corcondans and some uh, other books to help him understand that scripture. He couldn't. But that's during that time, his wife was watching him. I mean, he has been there for a long, many hours. He's not talking, he's just sitting there, and he's not doing anything, so the, ma the wife walked to him and asked him, do you have a problem today? He said, yes. And he said, uh, yesterday I was asking a question and I was trying to prepare a lesson. Pray without ceasing. He gave her the, the scripture and asked her, how do you understand it? The wife said, well, she sat down, she opened her Bible, she read it, she said, I don't know. While the wife and the husband were looking at each other and talking, the maid, in Ethiopia we have maids in every home. Don't think that we are rich, we are poor. But the way we do things in Ethiopia is quite, quite different from the way you do here. If, we, if I have a maid in my home, I will furnish her a place to stay. I will share the food that I eat with her. I will take care of her, and that's it. No payment. 
my wife had uh, uh, two knees replacement. She couldn't anymore really uh, cook. Well, thank God the missionaries have taught me how to cook. And so I try, I try to cook all the time. But we get, we say, I wish, we wish we are at home. At least we will get somebody. We will share the food and at least we have somebody to cook. But anyway, to come to the point, they have a maid and they have taught her the Bible. And she is, she was a member of the church. So she has the freedom because she's a Christian. She's not seeing uh, the head of the house as a master. She sees him as a brother. So it's easy to go and talk to him. So she came to them, I see both of you sitting here, what's going on? So Brother Mogus asked her, do, do you understand First Thessalonians 5? Verse 17 through 18. And she said, what is that? He read her the scripture. She, he, she said, that's the easiest scripture that I understand. Amen. He said, sure. have a seat. And tell me. <laughs> so she told him the first thing early in the morning while I'm in bed, when I open my eyes, I say, thank you, God. You have opened my physical eyes. Please open my spiritual eyes. The prayer is finished. She starts closing, putting up her clothing. She, she prays, God, thank you for the clothes that you have given me. But give me righteous clothes that I can wear and make you happy. The prayer is finished. She starts washing her hand to cook. She says, God, thank you for giving me this water. There are many people who does not have water. But you have given me a good water. And thank you for cleaning my hand with a fresh water. Amen. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you will wash my sin. Prayer is finished, still working. Then she cooks. She thank God. There are many people who does not have food. But here, my work is to cook food and feed my people here. She thanked God that please allow everyone to have a spiritual food in their life. And she cleans the house. As she cleans the house, she prays, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a home. That's right. And as I clean the dirt, please clean all the dirt from every congregation, the church. And then the day is over, she went back to her bed. On her bed, she says, I worked hard, I prayed for you, I'm resting now, thank you. But God, don't forget to give me everlasting life to be with you. All day, she has been praying. She is always meditating about God as she works. I think, I think it gives us some idea. Sometimes we think when we pray, we just have to sit down and bow our head and, you know, we, we are given freedom Amen. to pray standing, looking down, looking up, right. kneeling, whatsoever, but let us keep our communication with our God. I think that's the message. Okay, we, we really appreciated Brother Mogus to answer the questions. As I close my sermon, I want to confirm to you that God, God's word is powerful, is powerful. And Jesus is the eternal word of God. Amen. 
I cannot think of God's word as just a book or collection of writings. Worldly evangelism is a war between light and darkness. It is a war between Christ and Antichrist. Our battle becomes God's battle. And we know, and as we have said, the winner is God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we must, we must become evangelistic and willing to do our best to proclaim that we believe, that we believe with others. The lost must be saved and strengthen the saved. The gospel needs to be preached here in Olympia and also to the world. Why? Because the gospel is to all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as I said in the beginning, we are in the kingdom of God. We are chosen people. Let's thank God. We are not ordinary people. We are chosen people. We are ambassadors of Christ. That's what Paul is said. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. We can do. We may not be able to go to preacher training schools, but our life should be our message to the world. And God will help us. There are so many, you know, uh, I don't want to take more time, but I want to say one thing. I met an older man who has been appointed as an elder in one of the congregation in Ethiopia. And as I was talking to him, I noticed he has a young boy beside him. And whenever I say something or when I quote a scripture, he turns to the boy and he asks him, read it to me. He's not able to read and write. But he has, I don't know what kind of memory he has in his head. You ask him something, he gives you a scripture. Read that scripture. So what I'm trying to say is, we cannot give an excuse to God. Come on. In the beginning, Adam tried. Eve tried. It didn't work. God knows our capability. And as far as preaching is concerned, let's not try to say, I don't know. Let the preacher preach. No. God wants all of us to be a good example, taking the message, taking the gospel that saved us and share it with other people. If we cannot talk, let's show it in action, in life. And people will ask, oh, this man is a good man. This woman is a good woman. She loves people. She helps people. Why is she doing? Yeah. You know, in one of the, during the coming uh, in Ethiopia in 1984, uh, 87, we, we were feeding all people. We never ask it about their religion. We never ask it about their tribe. We never ask it anything. If they are hungry, they can come and the Lord's church would feed them. That was our plan. And many of the people, the Muslim people who live in the area, start coming. And they were thinking that we may say, no, you are Muslim, we can't feed you. But that wasn't what happened. We tried to feed them. You know, they gave us a name afterward to the church, to us. 
They never called us Church of Christ. They don't, they did not. But you know what they called us? Jesus people. No, oh, amen. Amen. It's beautiful. We belong to God. We are Jesus people. Amen. If I if I don't if I'm not able to read and write, but still, whatever I have heard, whatever I have believed, whatever I have obeyed, that knowledge should be shared with other people. Yeah. And our life should demonstrate who we are, yeah. who we belong to. So brothers and sisters in Christ, if there is anyone who have not really put Christ on in baptism, I'm not ashamed to invite. I invite. And I think that is the best thing that everyone should do. Because God is stretching his hand and he has, he's asking everyone, all people, to hear, to believe, to confess, and be baptized. When people do that, they become children of God. They become a member of that big kingdom, the Church of Christ, the body of Christ. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given me. And may God bless every one of you. Thank you. Let's stand and sing the invitation. There's not a friend like the Holy Jesus.
would like to thank all for their cards and prayers for Ayana and Evelyn, Olivia Lee Ignani, James Mercer's granddaughter, born 11 12, 2022, and for travel, Aretha and Jeff Wedge going to Michigan from 11, November 11 through December 7. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Your Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us and all that you do for us, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us each and every day of our lives, Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning and bringing us to this building, bringing this, this, bringing this family together as one. Father, we especially thank you this morning for Brother Iyalu and the message that he's get brought to us this morning and the work that he does in your name. Father, we pray that you continue to watch over mankind. There is so much corruption, violence, evil, and hatred in this world today. We pray that you can touch each and every one of us in a way that we all be willing to go out and bring someone else closer to you to make this world a better place for each and every one of us. Father, we pray that you be with us while we're away from this building and bring us back here at the next opportune time. These things we pray, Lord, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.